Good afternoon, everyone. Good to see you this afternoon. Today I have with me Chris Zurich. And Chris is, I gotta find his title because it's a long one. <laughs> he is the Education Program Consultant for Career and Technical Student Organizations for the Iowa Department of Education. And before that, he worked for years for the Missouri um, Department of Education as well. And he has been our Youth Ambassador Coordinator for, I don't even remember how many years. <laughs> Five years. <laughs> Five years? Okay, yeah. So um, we are going to talk a little bit today about youth programming and how we've had to pivot um, with COVID. So Chris, what, what happened to your trainings and your youth programming um, once the pandemic kind of took hold? Yeah, so I'm going to speak my entire time in my uh, prior role um, versus my current one since I just started that job here. Um, so in my prior role with the Missouri Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, um, I ran a youth nonprofit with about 15,000 annual members, and we offer 36 in-person programs throughout the course of a year, and that doesn't include any of our um, additional trainings or program facilitation. So 36 legitimate conferences. And unfortunately, uh, COVID reared its ugly head back in March, um, and caused us to actually end up canceling all of our conferences. And to this day, we still have not done in-person programming for any of our student members. Um, so we've definitely had to um, pivot, uh, which is definitely, I think, probably in the top five vocabulary for most of us who do in-person programming, to teaching our students in online formats and in on-demand formats so that we can still provide the value that we do in youth programming without risking any of our students or their families by providing that in-person programming. Um, so we've definitely shifted most all of our events and we've been lucky enough to have the, the time and flexibility to do so in planning over the summer, uh, but it's definitely been an interesting one. And how are the youth adapting to it? Because I know they're way more technology savvy than we as adults are. Are they adapting well to the online platform? I definitely think think there's some Zoom fatigue um, starting to set in with a lot of these students. Um, you know, here in Missouri, we've got such a, a diverse mix of schools that we have many that are in person, some that are blended, some that are entirely online. Um, so every area of the state is experiencing this, this pandemic differently in the way that it's affecting our programming differently. So I, I definitely see fatigue starting to kick in, but what we've been attempting to focus on is creating content that's delivered on demand. Um, so our ultimate goal is that we're not forcing students to sit on a Zoom call at X time, you know, every week or every two weeks to learn this programming, but we're instead saying, watch it when it's convenient for you, right? If you have downtime in your school in a break period, you can digest this 10 or 15 minute video rather than us keep you on a call for four hours or six hours. And it's not that we haven't been doing that programming too, but we've put all of our eggs for the most part in one basket with on-demand content. Um, we've been using learning management systems online, uh, Dropbox, Google Drive, Google Classroom to upload this content and just let students get it when they need to get it. Um, and we can continue to reinforce that through emails and Zoom calls, but we can let them do their learning when it best fits their lives and their families' lives. That's perfect. So us adults who are typically delivering this, um, if we're not as comfortable with this platform, and I mean, this is, this is what we have now, what tips can you give those adults working with the youth that would help them feel more comfortable in their programming online? Certainly, so uh, um, facilitating any sort of content in a remote environment is, is definitely interesting. I mean, you all are on a remote call today, um, learning something that we maybe would have been doing in person before. Um, so it's definitely a different dynamic when you're working with youth, but there are so many different tools out there that you can be utilizing that can engage your student leaders in an online format, um, some of my most favorites, I mean, you're on one right now is Zoom, but there's so many amazing features in Zoom that you can use that can make the experience be considerably more engaging. Um, you can do thumbs up, you can do polls, you can do breakout rooms, and it creates uh, a different feel than everyone just sitting on like a, uh, 
a grid, you know, the Brady Bunch style calls that we've all been on for a while. Uh, there's another program out there that i um, grown really fond of called Mural. And Mural is basically an infinite whiteboard. And if you have ever done program planning or youth facilitation in person, you've probably had post-it paths um, and people have been moving around a room and putting out ideas. You can do all of that in Mural and you can add celebration moments and gifts and videos uh, and polls and voting. It's a really dynamic software that gives people a more in-person feel. I was actually just on a call yesterday um, and we were reviewing that if you can't hook a youth in the first five minutes, if you can't keep them engaged for the first five minutes to be away from their cell phone, you'll lose them for the next hour. So it's very important that you kick off whatever you're doing in a fun and exciting way. Because if you give them a chance to open their cell phone, you will lose them. Um, and you may not realize it because we can all probably hide our cell phones right below us, right? I can set this down here and you'd never know I had videos running. Um, so we've been really focusing on making it absolutely as engaging as possible in those first few minutes because we know we can keep them for the rest of the call. And I think the last thing that we'll finish up with is uh, how important is it for youth to be a part of the planning for youth programming? I would say 100%. Um, you, when you're working with students, it is a two-way street. You are their friend and you are their mentor and you are their program facilitator, but at the same time, you should be learning from them. Uh, when I work with educators and I'm teaching them about values in youth communication and tips and tricks to communicating with youth, I remind them that these student leaders probably know about 15 more tools that they'd rather communicate with us on. So mm -hmm. we need to be learning at the same time when we're working with our students. Um, when we do all of our program planning. We work with our student leaders on building a foundation of skills. And then we dive into what we call a program of work or a POW, which probably many of your organizations have uh, or any program you've been involved in probably has laid out strategic goals and how they're gonna accomplish them. Who's going to do that? As a facilitator, I do not touch that document. That is the student's document. It is their job to fill in the gaps. What I do, what they do do is create the strategic goals. Um, so you need to look at your association and lay out, here's the five things strategically that we need to accomplish because of our grant program or because of the mission of our association. And then let the students fill in how they're gonna meet those strategic goals. When they develop something, when they put themselves in charge of it, when they set their own deadlines, that's when they actually feel way more value in their program. They care about it and they're invested in it. Um, so we try to drive home that it's our job to facilitate and build a core foundation to build the roots, um, but how high they want that tree to go is up to them. So we always encourage our students to be the ones who are really building out that program for the year. That's great. Well, I think we will conclude for today and I appreciate you taking the time to give us a little tips and tricks and um, have, a, have a great trip because I know you're getting ready to take a trip. Uh, yeah. Well, wonderful to be here and, and hope it helps some of you out with a few extra tips and tricks to working with our youth and, and pivoting uh, into the remainder of 2020. Great. Thanks so much, Chris. Thank you.